Hey guys, it's Cugsley, and welcome back to another video. So, I want to say this before we start, and it's probably going to be a pretty long video. I don't know how long it is, because um, I'm just starting recording. It really depends on just how much I'm going to try biting in one bit here. But I realized that I'm making this menu system, and I really want to show you guys how it works, because I'm pretty proud of it. So, this is going to be um, a dream tutorial on like how to make a menu system. Uh, this can work for any kind of menu system you want to make. Mine is SCP related, and so I have that built into the code already. But you can easily switch out you know, different things for other uh, labels. You can switch out variable names for other variable names and basically make it your own. So I'm going to do this now. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. It depends. I hope the guys who want to stick around and watch it enjoy. Let me say that. So with that, let's begin. So my menu system, I think I mentioned this in my other video, my one where I announced my new menu system. Um, it's just a little microchip, and it can be placed down anywhere, and it automatically works. And how it works is in here we have the menu button schematics, which is kind of like the main thing. Um, this determines you know what buttons you're pressing, right? Sends a pulse per. Most, uh, most buttons that you press don't need um, a, a wireless transmitter because most of them are pretty straightforward and so you kind of get in here, it gets a little messier. But still, we have nodes here that make it pretty obvious uh, where they are, like where they are, where they're going. But with triangle, that one goes so far, um, like that one goes so far into the uh, microchips that it's easier to just have that there because that way you can find it easily, especially since there's only a few. So in fact, there's only a few receivers in here as well. Um, as you can see, there's one right there. So we're gonna start off with let's do let's do the inventory quantity tracker. So this is like its menu system. Uh, menu. This is like its memory system. Um, and as you can see here, it's divided into four parts pertaining to these four sections. And well, this one being the smallest, right? And here's what it's look. Here's what it looks like. Now it, it may look bad, right? Especially when you open up like these ones. But keep in mind they're all separate, right? So I could you know, delete all these except that row and it's all good, right? Well, maybe, maybe keep these. There we go. So now what we have here is just um, a part that's been pointed out, right? And so it's all, it's like a little island and it makes up a big group of islands. So what we have is how it remembers stuff. And it's pretty simple. So if I get an object here, um, doesn't really need to be anything impressive, we can just grab one that has my memory chip on it. Or better yet, let me grab my pickup object memory chip. Let's just pick up that up. Yeah, so it's pretty small because it has to go on objects that aren't exactly very large. But basically, when you pick up an object that has this chip on it, it'll send a signal saying collected. Now, you would put something before that, for example, you would put bat uh, 148 collected, or in terms, if you had, say, miscellaneous, you would say battery collected, right? That's just, that word's always there, so had it, had it filled in. So when you pick up an object, it says it's collected, right? And depending on what object you pick up, one of these uh, 35 different wireless receivers uh, will sense that object. Now I said that there weren't many wireless receivers, I'm not counting this because they're in their own little island off here. In fact, they have no wires going in or out from this. Um, when I say wireless receivers, I, I mean more like in the menu section themselves where all the mess is. So I'm gonna clarify that now before we go too far and I forget. And you're like, whoa, that's wrong. Like, yeah. So there we go. So how this works is let's say we pick up um, key card one, collected. And uh, these ones are all caps because I made them earlier. And so there's different syntax everywhere. Um, I'm gonna go and clean that up later. Like later. But as of right now, it doesn't matter because it still works because I'm I haven't changed the key cards. So what happens is let's say this gets a signal. So this one here sends a signal to this timer saying, hey, we picked up a key card, right? And now what this does is it sends a small pulse of 0.1 seconds and it doesn't do finished, otherwise it'd be like a snap. But um, it does more of a, it does timer output. So as long as that is not at zero, it's on. And what that does is it goes over to this variable modifier named KC1. It doesn't matter what it's named as long as the variable it's going to is the same name. And what that does is it just says continuously well powered, which means that as long as there's power going into it, it's going up. And it doesn't need this here, uh, this operation value. It's implied one, and this will go up one. 
right? And it starts up. It starts off at zero. Has a maximum of one hundred. So if I really wanted to, I could go twenty six point one. And now, if I went to items, you would see which one is this? Key card one collected. There we go. Um, you'll see I have twenty six key cards. So that's how that works. Now the reason it works is because ah, open that back up. Oh, that's tiny. Um, so what this does is this can do this does a few things. It's uh, very important to have this in here because this is how it's saved, and this is also how it tells how many you have. So this only goes up in increments of one, right? Most of the time, um, I haven't noticed anything different. It could go up point one. I just haven't noticed. It typically rounds down or rounds up depending on where it is. But let's say it goes to five, right? We're just gonna bring that up to five. Now what will happen is there are two wires going off from here, right? And again, doesn't matter about these because they're all the same thing going to the exact same place. So what the first wire does, we're going to ignore this one. So what this first short wire here does is it goes to this signal manipulator. Now what this does is let's say we have one key card and we want to open a door that's a key card door. Now what will happen is if we don't have this here, we go straight over to the wireless transmitter. What will happen is it'll send the value one over to this here one out of 100, right? However, it's a little different here. As you can see, I've only doubled it um, right there, 2.0 out of 1, and it goes up all the way. So it's not quite 1 out of 100. It's possibly 1 out of 2, or I'm not sure exactly where it stands, but it sends a partial signal. Um, and what happens is this here will take that and it'll send that partial signal to wherever it's um, sending to, in this case, a key card door. And as a result, what will happen is that that door will have two signals. It'll have an on and an off at the same time. It's a partial signal. So on one hand, in a sense, well, they have a key card. They, they have some kind of thing that pertains to this key card level. So they obviously have what's required to open the door. But on the other hand, what's sensing to see if you do have it or not will also say, no, they don't have it because it's not a full signal. And so what will happen is the door will open and it will tell you at the exact same time you need a key card to open this door. And so you end up with both. And it's like, well, I opened it. I don't need a key card. I already have it. Right? And so it gets weird. And I took, it took me a while to figure this out. I tried, a different, I tried a bunch of different things, and all of them failed until I came across this one. This was kind of a last resort because if I remember correctly, these take up a little bit more processing power than other gadgets, but it's okay. So that's what that does. This here just makes a full signal 100%. No matter what this is, this here will always be A-OK. -okay. Now, what the second here, uh, wire here does is it's connected directly to the variable, which means that it's only sending one, right? Because it doesn't have this here to fix it. So what's in here, as you can see where this wire is going, um, this microchip is its graphics card. So basically, what this does is these control all the numbers, right? So every single number down here, you maybe will see them flashing on the screen. They're pretty small, but they're there. Uh, what those are, those are the numbers that tell you what you have. If I unpause here, I go down, you can see them right there. Now, we have one here, right? And one is portrayed there. And if we change this, oh, there we go. If we change this live and go again, now it's at five. So what it's doing, what's happening is these are number displayers. And this variable is sending in its value, right? 5.5 uh, in this case, uh, still rounding down. Interesting, typically it rounds up to five, but yeah, I guess not. And it goes over here. And this, instead of just, I don't know, uh, depicting on, it doesn't actually give you anything to type in here. It takes the value and it makes it into a number. And so this five, well, it's translated right there onto the screen. And that's how that works. Now, you might be wondering, well, what's that down here, right? And we will get onto that. And before I do, remember, all of these are the same. So don't sweat if it looks bad. Just copy and paste. Make one, copy and paste all the way down. Change the, uh, the labels to what you want them to be, and you're instantly finished. So now what this is, is um, let's, take a, let's take for a moment that you have uh, a paper. Uh, for this, I actually need to go into a character, but you've seen the papers, you've seen how they look, um, I assume. Um, if not, then, well, there are some videos on my channel that uh, show that. Basically, it's 
like an exact representation of what happens in the actual containment breach game. You hold a paper up in front of your face and the menu apparatus, the menu screen, whatever you want to call it, disappears, right? And this helps that. So if you've noticed, right, um, this here is completely isolated from all of this. However, although isolated, you'll also notice it has its own graphics card, which means that these graphics are not entirely dependent on this menu selection logic. And that's where these here come in. Uh, if you notice, I opened up a different microchip, but they all have the same logic down here. Only the, the only thing that changes are the, um, the labels to account for the different sections. Don't worry about it. So what this does is it turns off these numbers when you open a paper, when you close the menu, it controls all of that. And it happens like this. So we have an AND gate going into the power. And that AND gate is saying if these two, if, uh, these two inputs are on, then this here can display all its numbers. But if they're not on, then don't do it. right? And let's open up this as well because it's not, as I said, it's not entirely dependent, but it is to a degree dependent on it. And it happens in these here microchips. So let's open up, uh, which one, papers? All right, let's open up papers. And I believe paper section's open. If I'm correct, that should be the right one. Yep. All right, so how this works is when you open a section, we'll get onto what this does. It activates this here transmitter. And that transmitter says, well, the, the section's open, it's ready to go, um, so display everything on there, um, except for the papers, of course. Display the options. <laughs> That's better. Display the options. And now, this is like, okay, well, that's sending a signal, so obviously it wants us to display the options. So that that's one of the two. Now, what this is, is this looks for a document open. So what this means is let's say that you will, all right, let's open, let's open the 106 document, right? So now we're reading the paper and we don't want the uh, text boxes for the menu overlapping with the paper. What I mean by that is this. Oh, let's delete some of these. Uh, let's... Wait, why is that still? Oh, I know why. This is copied out here. There we go. So this is all text boxes. If you go in here, you'll see text box, text box, text box text box, big text box, right? And so if you have the menu system, while you're reading a paper, which is also made of text boxes, they may overlap, they may look ugly, it, it'll get really bad. So to fix this, when you open a paper, it'll send a signal saying, well, there's a document that is open, hence document open, and if the document is open, this not eight reverses the signal, so document open, on, becomes off, which means that won't be on, which means it'll turn off these as well, because remember, these are separate from the actual uh, thing here. So whereas you just have these turn off if document open, you need a secondary one here to do the same thing. So therefore, if the document is not open and you're on the section, right, it'll be on. So that's what it does. So with that, we have, uh, we finished that. So that's the, uh, one of the largest microchips. Um, this one is pretty large too, but it's pretty simple because it's not fully developed yet, but the idea is there. We're going to go on to external sequences first. So external sequences, um, if you noticed, this is off, right? And uh, what this is, is when I play and I press the menu button, that there selector changes, right? Now, let's say that um, some of the stuff in here, like a gas mask, for example, um, if I actually give myself a gas mask, it'll be easier to show you. So let's just go down here to gas mask and let's just fling that up. All right, I have 30, I have 40 of them. We'll find out which one it is. So now I go in here and I have 31. All right, cool. So I press X, right? And it puts on the gas mask. Now, of course, there's that glitch that was in the previous video. I haven't quite fixed yet, but I will fix it in this video when I'm showing what this uh, spam chip does. So now if you notice, this is off because the menu's closed, right? But if I had the graphics dependent upon this microchip here, there'd be a problem because then, well, you know, that microchip's off. The second I close the menu, the graphics are gone, right? That's on. I would close it and be off again. So it wouldn't work. Hence the external sequences. So what this does is right before you close the menu, right? It sends a signal saying, all right, um, they selected this, turn this on. And this selector here will go down to whatever it was selected to. And it will activate whatever external sequences it needs to activate. Hence the name. So 
there is uh, there's gas mask, there's 1025 death sequence, and then there is, well, I didn't label this one, but it's night vision goggles. Let's just name it NV for now. So that's what it does. And then right here, um, there's facial item equipped. That will be for a later update. As of right now, I'm working on making it a thing. Basically, it's going to be able to determine whether or not they have something on or not. And if so, they can't put something on. They can't take something. They can take it off. But that's to add that on later. So that's the basics of it. Um, that's the basic concept. Um, if I really wanted to, I could go in here and kind of explain it. Um, like hide external, hide external stimulus. Uh, that means, so when you have the menu open, right? Some of the stuff like the gas mask, as you can see, warp the view, right? So if I turn this on, you know, a uh, fish glass thing kind of happens, right? Um, and it, it makes it look weird. And so I've added this in as well to fix that later. So where um, when you open the menu, it says hide external stimulus, specifically pertaining to things that could distract the player, and it will turn that off as shown by this here, which shows these. So um, perhaps not the fish glass one, but definitely the, uh, the lenses, which are just text boxes, as you can see there, and there's like, uh, I use a special like, kind of splatter. So uh, standard, not painterly, and I just made it really small, I made it larger. Um, looks like, oop, too large. Looks like that. I don't think you can see it. Uh, there you go. So that's why I did, and I just made it really small. That's how you can make textured glass if you want to. That's how I do it. Um, it's really good for making flat, uh, plain surfaces, things that you want to be transparent, but not you know, you don't want it to look like flex. There's a bunch of different ways you can do. It. That's my way. So that's how that works. And I will be adding this in for other stuff too, like the night vision goggles, not the 1025 death sequence. You you. You click that, you're in for the ride. Um, but yeah, so that's external sequences, and we are halfway done. Because uh, these are pretty self-explanatory. I mentioned that they are uh, they add pulses to buttons, and so a continuous thing when you press it down, it pulses it. Um, this prevents any glitches happening. If you hold on X, then it will open up a bunch of different things. Instead, it sends a pulse, and one and done. And then you press again to do something else. So now, we're going to go on to... Uh, I'll do the spam chip last, because that one is what I, need to, what I need to work on, so I don't want to get too caught up into it before I finish the video. Oh, by the way, this is just an output node, so if the menu is open, it'll send an output saying menu open. Yeah, this works. This is useful when you have a character that you want to implement this into, so that's just there. So now we have this, and I've already showed that this here is um, the graphics card uh, for the main inventory, and what these wires are is for each button, right, or for each section, uh, this selector selects it, right? So that's papers, that's miscellaneous items, and SCPs. And what that does is it just highlights one of these four. So this one here is SCPs, this one's miscellaneous, and so on and so forth. Now let's close that up. And now if you'll notice that there are four nodes on this microchip in total. There are the up and down nodes, and there are the X and square nodes. So now what these do is, because the menu is kind of in an awkward situation where I can't quite use circle. Reason being is if I use circle, then that's also blink. And I don't want to make it to where, oh, circle's blink in this case, but not in this case. It's kind of blink there, not blink. I, I want to avoid that, so I've made my own button scheming, and it's kind of weird. Um, it, it's You get used to it, but it's there, and it's annoying at first. So what I've done was I used X and square. Now, how this works is X is typically to select, and that's always kind of been the thing. Pick up items, open doors, select stuff. And square is to go back. So the reason I have these nodes is because I, would, I was doing some um, digging on uh, uh, specifically Reddit for Dreams, and Lucid Stew made a video talking about you know how the thermometer works. And I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. Uh, for those of you who don't know, basically he explained that uh, there's a bunch of different things that make the thermometer uh, say what it says. In fact, now it's actually available, so you can see it for yourself if we go down here and click on that. So now, if we click on more details, right, you'll see it says gameplay memory, and we do that. So it'll tell you what your stuff is taking up. So there's things, and then there's wires and animation. So things, um, as it says right there, I will, I'll read it. Uh, this is a limit on the number of things in the scene. By things, we literally mean anything. Gadgets, wires, sculptures, paintings, puppets, sounds. One way to reduce your thing count is to merge paintings together. 
So, you know, this is literally everything, gadgets and all. And to avoid this, now it does says it does say wires. And to avoid although there are more wires, there's less in total. And with wires and animation, still wires and kind of keyframes and motion recorders. So now the reason why let me exit out of this. Now the reason why I'm using uh, like just nothing but wires instead of wireless transmitters and wireless receivers is because, well, it skips in and makes it a lot neater, but now you have one and then two, right? So that's two things right there. Whereas this, you have this and then you have, oh, uh, let's, there's four here, right? But instead of, it'd be eight, right? Well, actually, no, it would be, what, 16, I think? Yeah, and then, yeah, it'd be 16. Because you also have to put wires into the transmitters as well, and you have to put wires out of the receivers. Basically, a lot. So to avoid this, you use nodes. And you just have anything that is uh, local, not local, anything that is general, right? So X for, is used for a lot of things in the menu. So spread it to everything that uses X with as little extra stuff as possible, right? In programming, in anything really, you don't want to repeat yourself. Because repeating yourself takes up more space, it makes it messier, and it makes it harder to do anything. So here, that's what I did. Now, we're going to get on to kind of what this stuff does. So right here, we have document open, right? And we have the not gate, which we already established disables graphics. And this being the menu, so there it is. Now, what we have here is a hor disable horizontal select, or a section already open. Now, what this is, is when you open a section, right? You don't want to be able to transition to the sections while you're going up and down. It'll make things weird. So once you once you've opened a section, as shown here, you can no longer go left and right. This just uh, ugh, ugh, I messed up some stuff. I think this just you know stops the game from breaking basically. Now that's it. Um, so we can go on to the next part now, which are the microchips. I will be showing you. I think it's items that I named everything for. Yeah, perfect. So we're gonna go into items. Um, that also happens to be one of the most complex, which is good because it makes these so much easier. We'll also do papers too because that has something important as well. So now in items, um, I did the courtesy of labeling everything in here so you can kind of have an idea. So now we have X and square, which both go into here. And we also have the main section selection, up and down, and that's it. So right here we have what looks to be square, yeah. So square is close item section, and then there's also select item section, which pertains to this here counter, which is item section open or closed. So if you press X on something, well, it's gonna open it up, right? And it's gonna activate the item section open. In fact, we play, uh, that's on, the microchip is on now, it's not selected, and there it goes. Now I'll go back, there it goes. So that's what it does. So when you press square and you also have no document open, it's going to close item section. Now that's important because let's say you're reading a paper and you want to exit out of the paper but not the section, it'll let you do, you exit out the paper, then the section. That just makes it easier on all of us. So there's that, and now there's this one here which is select item section, and it's the exact same thing. If you're on the correct one, right, so if you're on items and you press X, it simply adds on to it. And this here is just an output the layer, as I've named it. I think you can read that. It's kind of a little blurry from my angle. Um, and that basically just adds a small delay and this avoids any glitches with uh, simultaneous like selecting. And then it sends out the item section open. Now in here, we're almost done now, we're almost done. Uh, Cause once we finish this, all we gotta do is one more microchip and we're done, one more. So in here, we have the main selection for items, right? So we have item selector. And then we have X again, another node. This is to kind of keep it from you know getting crazy because look at where that node goes to for these. So this helps tidy it up a little bit. And we have the item selector, we have X, and then we have these. There's, ah, I didn't label them. Well, this one's delete if I'm correct. No, this one is graphics card. Mm -hmm. This one should be delete. Correct, and this one here should be use items. Now, you may be wondering, well, where are the items? Where are the items, Cugsley? Well, the items are actually in the external um, the external sequences. So, a little bit of a callback there, right? Um, those are the items that we went over previously. So if we bring it up next to it, we'll see it. there they go, right into those selectors to 
let's do their thing. So this one's pretty simple. Basically, if night vision goggles is available, check. They press X, check. And then if they're on, if they're selecting that specific item, um, determined by this year's selector, check. Open it up. And if not, then well, I mean, they're not opening it, so don't need to worry. So that's that one. Pretty simple. Now, what we have here is the graphics thing. So basically, it just uh, displays a small highlight over each and every single object. So shown by this, right? So you see that's on. Now it's going to go. That one is on. That one's on. That one's on. Right? It just selects them. Uh, that way, it's easy to tell you know, what you're selecting. Otherwise, it's a blind guess. And finally, we have the deletion microchip. And I've actually named them on the papers. I just forgot to uh, label them here, apparently. Now, all this does is, well, are they on the selected one? If yes, then that's one of these AND gates checked, whichever one it may be. And do they press triangle? If yes, then it's going to activate these uh, variable modifiers, which says plus negative one. So all it does is it subtracts. It's like plus well, negative one. I don't really know what to say there. Uh, yeah, so that's how you delete them. And that's how it is for every single uh, item that you can get in the game. So with the papers, it's the same thing, right down to this. There's a bit of di there's a bit of a difference here with X and square, and as I mentioned earlier, that's to read papers. So they go straight into here. This is the same. In fact, actually, we share an X there, right, to save space. And no buzzing, stop, please cease. And pull the right plug. There we go. All right, so. Yeah, there's just a like, mini refrigerator and there's nothing in there, so don't worry about it. Um, so we kind of like share an extra to save space. So in here now, right, we have, and I actually labeled these, um, which is nice, and I color coded them. So again here, we have document open. If yes, then disable these here little bits there, right? So that's the same. But what changes is mainly this one right here. The deletion logic is the exact same. So what changes here is now we have... To, uh, we have two more things. Now we have square and X added in. So, same thing, do they press X? Or, well, is document available? Cool, yes. Do they press X? Yes. And are they selecting it? Yes. Now, is it, uh, is it on? Well, it doesn't really matter. If you press square, actually, there's an AND gate there, which is smart on my part. I'm glad I didn't add in that extra step. Sometimes I do that, because I don't think. But now if they press square, it's simply like, hell, you, can, like, you don't even have to have the paper. You press square on that, it'll still reset the counter. It will go from zero straight to zero. And uh, that saves space because now it doesn't have to determine, well, do they have one? Yes, all right, now you now you go to zero. Now I'm starting at zero. Subtract all you want, it's, it's only going to be zero, right? So don't worry about it, right? Um, but if it does have something, it goes straight back to uh, null. So there you go. That's how you open and close papers. And now if we go out of here, we have the final microchip. And this here is the spam chip. I didn't know what to name it. It sounds like spam, but uh, it's not that kind of spam. So what this is, is you saw here earlier, you put on the mask, you put on the night vision goggles. Uh, what we're gonna do is we don't have night vision goggles. Ugh. We don't have night vision goggles. And we forgot to add in this here reset count. So if I were to add in the reset counter, what I would do is I would go here. Because what happens is, basically what this does is you pick something up and it says, well, and you put it on. It says, you put this on. In fact, do I still have the gas mask? And yeah, I do. So it'll say, you put on the gas mask, and then it'll say that because I accidentally connected it to the wrong thing. This should go down there. So basically, what this does is let's say you put on the gas mask, right? The gas mask will send a signal saying, he put me on, right? And then what will happen is that signal, whether it be via wire or via wireless receiver, as shown here, will get to these here counters, right? So let's do the uh, gas mask one. So wireless, re wireless receiver gets a signal, turns on that counter, goes to one. It's on, he put it on, right? Now what's going to happen is it's going to send two signals. It's going to send one here to you put on the gas mask, right? That'll just say you put it on. But it's not going to turn off until it's reset, right? So you just have it on your screen forever as shown by uh, that glitch there. And there we go. So here's what you do. You send another signal going to a timer, right? And you have that timer on plus and you have it, oh, that plus works too, I suppose. It does. 
And what you do is you have it so where once it finishes, it sends a signal saying, well, I have done my job, I've completed. And what it'll do there is it will send that signal down back to these counters and tell it to reset. And there you go. Now, what this is up here is this basically stops you from opening up your uh, your inventory while that's uh, displayed because then you'd have, um, I, I guess, collision of text. You'd have text over text in like a way that you don't want. So what that does is if a counter is on, and gate, that's one. Now, not gate. Well, it's always going to be on until this turns on, in which what will happen is that. It will go into like a paradoxical on-off thing. And it will keep going until that timer stops because then signal's lost. Or until, yeah, signal's lost from there. That's how that works. And basically, when that AND gate is on, it constantly spams, hence spam chip, yeah, clever names, I know. And I'm a genius, what can I say? And it goes into this A, so it constantly spams, it's off, 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 off. And it never lets it turn on until it is turned off in itself. So that's how that works. And as you can see, I've already fixed that. So now if we go in here and we do that, it should work perfectly fine. Drop the gas mask, off. There we go. So that was my 30-minute uh, essay on this menu chip. I hope I didn't miss anything too much. Um, you, you didn't miss very much with the, uh, ah, where am I going? Uh, you didn't miss very much with like the other microchips. I guess I'll give like an honorable mention. Um, this one also has an external sources, which is SCP-1025, right there. And basically that just activates a death sequence, um, which is basically a big collection. Um, it's not a collection of counters, it's a, it's a big selector. And once it starts, it can't stop. That's basically all it is, and it just gets more and more warped. And then once it hits the final one, it just says kill chart. So that's all it does. Uh, in case you were wondering, because I don't believe you out. So I think that's it. Um, if I missed anything, please let me know. If you actually watched to the end, uh, yeah, please let me know. And I want you to leave a, a magic word in the comments just, just to make sure, because I'm actually genuinely curious if people watch these videos to the end or not. Um, the magic word is uh, Ralph Waldo Pickle Chips. And if you're really cool, you'll know what that reference is. So that's like a double secret password. Yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you guys learned something. Now, I will be making this public once it's finished, um, which will hopefully be soon. Let's get rid of that. So, once it's done, feel free to use it however you want. And like I said earlier, it's placeable anywhere you want. You can plop it down a level right now. I can put down a character right now, not even have the microchip on him, and it will work. So, with that, uh, there we go. I forgot to turn off that counter. It's probably not save changes. Well, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, final one for the night. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.